If you haven't already jumped on the Pokemon Go hype train, consider yourself lucky. For the millions of us who did, listen carefully. This game is more dangerous than you think. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's this GPS-based game on your phone where you walk around in real life locating these cute little monsters to catch them with a capsule. Sounds innocent enough, right? Now, when it first came out, I, like many others, was absolutely thrilled to stand outside my lawn for hours catching Pidgeys and Rattatas. It seemed I was finally living out my childhood dream, even if I was just catching these stupid-ass purple rats. My house is located in a small suburban neighborhood pretty far from town, but there were several lakes and woods nearby that made the area quite beautiful. It was really fun to walk through the trails catching Pokemon, however there weren't much around here except for the really common ones my friends already had. I realized there was even more to this game when I discovered gym battles and Pokestops. This got me biking all over town trying to visit them and collect all different types of Pokemon I could find. When I finally hit level 5, I joined Team Instinct, excited to finally start battling. This went on for a couple of days. My parents were thrilled that I was spending so much time outside instead of locked up in my room playing video games. Guess I was still playing, but as long as I was outside, my parents didn't care. About a week after I downloaded the app, I was up late playing Overwatch when I noticed there was a new Pokemon on my nearby list. Sweet, a coffee, I thought. I didn't have one of those yet. It was almost 2am, but I figured I'll just be outside for a little bit. I won't go far. I mean... I gotta catch them all, right? We just finished a round on Hanamura, so I told my friends I'd be right back. When I got outside, I realized the street was pretty well lit, thanks to multiple street lights placed throughout the neighborhood. It was comforting. I'll be okay, I said to myself reassuringly, and began walking in a direction to test if coughing was getting closer. However, I'd made it pretty far and I noticed he remained at three steps. The number of steps indicates how far away it is, from zero to three steps. I then turned back the other way and walked for about five minutes before I realized coughing wasn't getting any closer. Slightly frustrated, I decided to head back home when I noticed a new Pokemon had shown up on my nearby list. At first, I wasn't sure what it was. It didn't seem to have a head and just had these long, thin arms and legs that were attached to its body. It reminded me of Deoxys and Defense Form, but I remembered he wasn't even in the game. Then it hit me. This was a Hitmonlee. I had heard my friends talking about how rare those were, and I quickly got excited. I was pretty far from home, but I was eager to show off to my friends my new Hitmonlee, so I continued down the road. As I proceeded in my quest for the Hitmonlee, I noticed I got closer and closer, until it was at the top of my nearby Pokemon list. Glad to know I was on the right track. My excitement quickly turned to hesitation when I realized I had made it to the edge of the woods. I'm a pretty avid horror fan, so I've read my fair share of scary stories about the woods. But there I was, about to catch a Hitmonlee, so I wasn't about to let some axe murder or staircases turn me off from continuing down the trail. I reminded myself that I'd be quick and thought of the glory of bragging to my friends so I stepped foot into the eerie cluster of trees. Fortunately, a small dirt path had been cleared out, so I don't have to worry about getting sliced up by a bunch of branches. The path was fairly straight, so I didn't feel the need to turn on my flashlight. This game absolutely slaughters my battery. I followed the path all the way to the clearing, where several picnic tables had been overturned. I shined my screen on them and noticed several large splatters located on the wooden tables. They looked red, but it was hard to tell. Someone must have been playing paintball here and used these for cover. Pretty good idea if you ask me. At this point, Hitmonlee was only two steps away, but when I tried to look for a way to keep moving forward, all I was met with were trees. The path had ended. I considered forcing my way through the thick foliage, but I guess I finally got some sense in me and passed it off as a bad idea. Disappointed, I turned to follow my trail back and to my surprise, Edmond Lee was getting closer. 
I didn't understand how walking in the opposite direction I was just going brought me closer to my target, but I didn't question it. Perhaps it was glitchy, and fortunately, that was in my favor, or so I thought. I grinned as the one step quickly turned into no steps, indicating that the Pokemon was right near me. I stopped and waited for the sweet, victorious vibration of my phone, and sure enough, it came. But something was wrong. Very wrong. First of all, Hitmonlee was brown. Whatever just popped up next to me on my screen was an ugly gray. I zoomed in and noticed that it didn't have any eyes. It was just this large blob with arms that was set up with two very long legs. I tapped on it to catch it and my camera turned on. The arrows indicated that it was to my left, so I spun my phone around until it was pointing back in the direction of the clearing. My heart raced as I frantically looked at my screen for something, but there was nothing there. Just a lone Pokeball waiting to catch whatever I had just found. I'm still not sure why I did this. It wouldn't have helped. But instinctively I flipped on my flashlight and immediately wished I hadn't. Whatever stood before me was neither human nor Pokemon. It was fucking terrifying. It had these two awful, sunken holes the size of a beehive that might have had eyes if it had any. Its entire body was made up of this gray, rotten flesh that made me want to hurl just looking at it. I don't know how long I stood there, paralyzed with fear, before I noticed its body started separating at the abdomen to reveal thousands of tiny teeth that looked like horrid legs of a centipede. Then it screamed. If I wasn't running before, I sure was now. I was letting out these panicked whimpers as I tried to navigate my way back home. With all the roots and rocks, I knew at one point I was going to trip, and that would be the end of me. Immediately after that thought, my foot caught something hard, and I hit the ground, throwing my phone ahead of me. I started crying as I heard the sound of branches snapping, getting closer and closer. I could see the headlines already. 19-year-old murdered in woods while playing Pokemon Go. Sorry, Niantic. At that point, I must have been pretty delusional, because something screamed in my head that I should grab my phone and throw a Pokeball at it. A Pokeball. At that... thing. When you have nothing to lose, you're willing to try just about anything. So I scrambled over to my phone and held it up in front of me like a holy cross. I flipped on the flashlight and focused on my phone screen. It's just a game. It's just a game. I repeated to myself. Suddenly, it leaped out toward me. I swiped up on my phone screen and closed my eyes, feeling ridiculous for what I had just done. And then I heard it. The sound of something being captured. I opened my eyes to see that nothing lay ahead of me, except for a couple of rocks and twigs. But on my screen, there was a Pokeball. You know that anxious feeling you get when you're down to just a few Pokeballs, but there's a CP-428 Dugong and you just have to catch it? Well imagine that, but add a hundred times more terror and panic, and you have what I was feeling. I prayed, prayed that whatever I had just caught would stay that way. I listened carefully, eyes closed. One tick, two tick, three tick, caught. My mind couldn't process what just happened. I just laid there on the ground, sobbing and shaking from whatever the hell I just had experienced. Eventually, I realized I don't want to spend another second in these stupid woods, so I got up and checked my phone. My app had crashed. I didn't care. I started to run, but quickly stopped from the jolting pain that shot up my leg. I must have twisted my ankle pretty bad from the fall. I hobbled back home as quickly as my crippled foot would take me and collapsed on the couch. The next morning I wanted to believe I had dreamed the whole thing, but the pain in my foot told me I hadn't. I then decided to check my phone, so I started up Pokemon Go and checked my recent Pokemon, and my heart sank. The abomination I saw yesterday was now in my phone. I summoned up the courage to tap on it and it brought me to the stat screen like any other Pokemon, but everything, including its name, were just these weird scratch-like symbols. 
It looked just as terrible as it did last night. Disgusted, I decided I had enough of this stupid game and quickly deleted it. This was way too real for me. I was done catching Pokemon. But we all know that's not true. You can't just quit Pokemon Go. Sure enough, I downloaded it again three days later and made a new account. The game is just too much fun. But I want to warn you guys, there is something sinister about this game and I experienced it firsthand. I love playing it so much, but I feel like I'm being put in danger. Stay safe everyone. I was still a little bit skeptical that this whole thing even happened, so I went back to the trail with some friends today to check it out. When we got to the clearing, we found something incredibly creepy that I think may explain what happened. I'll finish typing it up in a bit, but I noticed on my screen the coughing popped up again on my nearby list. I still don't have one yet, and I really, really want it. It's almost midnight, but I figure I'll just go outside for a little bit. I won't go far. I mean, I gotta catch them all, right? Today's no sleep story comes from username Yumo. New videos every week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And sweet dreams. <laughs>